All right, hi biology students. So today we're going to talk about some things that you've learned thus far through that puzzle you watched and we have about, about cells, right? About cell structure and what we call cell theory. So I want to review two individuals first. So von Leeuwenhoek and uh, Robert Hooke. So von Leeuwenhoek, he is the inventor of the microscope, right? So the inventor of the microscope. And you learn that his microscope was pretty primitive, right? It was just, you know, a lens on a plate. It had a screw. Uh, and he, like, scraped his teeth and looked at what he called animacules, which really was looking at bacteria or colonies of bacteria. He just didn't know it yet, right? Because we hadn't coined that term yet. And so he was the first person to allow us, von Leeuwenhoek, to be able to see small objects that otherwise we could not see with our naked eye. And so that was a big moment and a big thing, and so we call that a microscope. And he sends uh, his findings, right? He writes letters, because that's what they did back then. And he writes letters about what he was doing to his buddy, Robert Hooke. And Robert Hooke says, okay, well, I'm gonna create my own microscope, and he does. And Robert Hooke looks at some cork cells. Okay, cork cells. Now, hope you know that cork is plant tissue. Okay, so plant tissue. Now, later on, we're going to talk about why plants and corks um, have a different kind of cell, all right, than animal cells. But the big thing I need you to know about cork cells and plant cells is they have something that makes them very particular. They have a cell wall. And so what happens is Robert Hooke looks at these cork cells, and when he looks at them, he sees something that looks pretty darn similar to this picture. In the darkened area in the middle that I'm writing in are nuclei. So he looks at something that looks like that, okay? And so they're very cube-like, very square, pretty plain, all right? And so what he did was he said, boy, this sure looks similar to the rooms of a monastery, places where very spiritual monks are live, right? And so he came up with the word cells. And so that word didn't exist yet. And so Robert Hooke is responsible for giving us the word cells. Then a little while later, we eventually come to this thing called cell theory. There are three parts to it. The first two are pretty darn easy for us to, to grasp onto, right? And that is, all living things are made of cells. Like, all living things are made of cells. That's the first one. And for us, that just makes a lot of sense in the 21st century here, right? So made of cells. And then the second thing is that the cell is the basic unit of structure and function for life. So structure and function for life. And the first two cell theory parts were derived by two individuals, all right, Schleiden and Schwann. And then this last part is this, that cells come from other cells. Cells come from other cells. We give this a name called biogenesis. And this was by a person named Rudy Virchow. And so between von Leeuwenhoek, who invented the, uh, the microscope, Hooke, who was then able to, by looking at plants, cork, call them cells. And then we had cell theory. All living things are made of cells. The cell is the basic unit of structure and function of living things. And cells come from other cells. They don't just arise from nowhere. Okay? Life begets life is the idea. Living things come from living things. In that. So these first two are Schleiden and Schwann, and this last one is Virchow. And that's the short version of, uh, of 
Von Leeuwenhoek, inventor of the cell. Hook, cork, and plant cells. And the idea of cell theory. All living things are made of cells. Here, I'm trying to like let you have a little zoomed in here. Okay? Cells are basically units of structure and function in life. And cells come from other cells. Schleiden, Chuan, and Virchow. All right, I hope that uh, this has gone well for you, and uh, I hope you're having a great day. Take care.